up there trying to So as you guys can see in that montage, we are running a bullseye build. As you guys can see in the montage, I did have a different playstyle than the typical bullseye players that you guys see. Um, most people run this build for bullseye based off the huntsman boots and then the bingo. I run it off of the wildfire and I mainly use the wildfire as my main weapon for uh, most fights, especially when I'm fighting multiple people. I might switch over to like the bingo in between the fights. But I'll explain all that later. We're just gonna speed right through all of like um, the mods and gears and everything that I have on my character and how I make my character the way I make them. And then I'll explain the playstyle and how this works. All right, 
So first thing we're gonna do is, obviously, whenever you wanna look at your stats, you're gonna wanna crouch with the weapon that you main. That way, you never lose the stats on your character. If you're not crouching, your character will start doing an idle animation. They'll put the gun away, or they'll like, you, if you have a skin like I do, like they'll start doing this, where like they start um, pulling out the water gun or looking around and everything. You see, look at her, she's doing like little poses and everything. There's the water gun. It starts blowing out bubbles and everything. So she'll start doing that even while she's standing still. So crouch, cancel all your animations, have your gun out. And then here is the real damage, HP, and then um, damage increases and damage reductions. So what we build off of this is uh, just regular damage, um, anything that does damage increase. We do weak spot build and then we also do down here, we do um, damage reduction. Um, for some reason, it says I have zero weak spot damage, which I don't know why. Oh. One of our mods is not in the correct place. So, put this back on. And now our weak spot should be back to where it was. Yep. So, alright. So, since we're looking at the mods, since I had to fix it. Um, this is the mod that I'm running. I'm running Precise Strike. You could also run another mod. Um, it has something to do with fire rate. I believe it is called the uh, fire rate. Um, yeah, momentum up. Momentum up, fire rate plus 10% for the first 50% of the magazine and weapon damage plus 30% for the next 50% of the magazine. So momentum up is another mod that you can go with. It, it gives you better fire rate and gives you more damage in the second half. But depending on what substats you have, um, momentum up might be better this might be better but if you're gonna run the same build as me where you use the pistol uh, more than a sniper this is probably what you're gonna want to run because you're always gonna get those three stacks because the pistol shoots so fast and then uh, these are my sub stats the sub stats you're gonna want to go for is weak spot weapon damage damage weapon damage reduction as well or if you can get weak spot uh, weapon damage reduction and then HP for the mask you can get right here we have the most wanted again precision we got weak spot weapon damage reduction um weapon damage reduction and weak spot or damage are the two stats that you at least want on your gears so like if you have no gears that um you have like anything good on and then you're like making the build um these two or weapon damage instead of the weak spot right here that's what you're gonna want to go for you're gonna want uh weapon damage reduction at like at least that's that's what you want that's the most important thing and then a damage increase like weapon damage or weak spot is also important so those are the two that you need and that'll make your your mod be a decent mod to keep and then you can move on to the next one like right here and then do another mod so right here i have head on conflict i have weapon damage reduction you can switch this out you can do like hp um the life force boost right here that i have it gives 12 percent hp this is a really rare mod to get um i got lucky stats on those um but i'm not really using it for this build um this is for another build that i'm making too as well um, there's another mod that you can use for uh, your top and it is called Resist advantage when out of combat gain one stack of damage reduction 5% every 10 seconds effect can stack up to five times one stack is removed when hit again It's called resist advantage that mod. I've been recommended to by um, other people I haven't tried it myself, but apparently it's really good and it can make you more tanky as in um, when you fight somebody else with a bingo build if they build sniper um, and it build a lot of weak spot damage and you know that usually one to two taps people um it could be a four to maybe even a six tap for you to die to that sniper if you have that mod apparently apparently that's how that works but um this is what i was running while i had this build here's the pants um we have unstoppable weak spot damage plus 20 percent when a bullet hits a target more than 20 meters away so this is more for a sniper but that 20 percent is still nice um even with the pistol if we're a little bit farther away like the mid-range we're still going to be hitting hard and then again i have the weak spot and weapon damage reduction if we get to the gloves this is a must you got to always have this if you're running bullseye weak spot damage plus 25 percent and i have weak spot status damage reduction weapon damage reduction status damage reduction you don't really want this this is not really that good of a thing but if you do get it it's okay i guess it's a reduction but weapon damage reduction is what you're going to want at the very least do not settle for status damage for my boots i have Covered advance, taking no damage within four seconds grants plus 20% melee weapon and status damage for 30 seconds. We don't get status damage as a bullseye build uh, melee, not really important. The weapon damage is what's important, so this is a must have. And then we have element, weapon damage reduction, max HP. 
I think I have another, here we go, this is the one. So this is the one that I should be using weak spot, weapon damage reduction, max HP. Again, I was messing around with builds and stuff and I'm making another build currently. So I have that one equipped. This one wasn't that bad either. It has max HP and weapon damage reduction, but no increase on damage. So this one is actually a really good roll. I got weak spot damage, weapon damage reduction and max HP. So this is really the roll you're gonna wanna get. Um, I wish I got more lucky colors like, you know, this green as well, but, or a blue, but this is really the ideal roll that you want. Max HP, weapon damage reduction, weak spot damage. For the gears, as you guys can see, I'm running a four-piece savior set. Um, the savior set is a must-have in PvP. If you're not rocking it, no matter the build that you have, then you are not going to perform well in an engagement in any type of war zone. In a GVG zone, maybe in a 1v1, you might do well without it if you have like a lot of damage. Uh, but like, if somebody has savior and you're fighting them, they're gonna beat you most likely. Um, savior set on top, best gear in the game. Um, for any builds, you gotta use this. It has a medicine cooldown for the one piece. When HP is above 70%, weapon and status damage plus 10% on a two piece. So this works with any build because you get status and weapon damage. And then on a three set, you get when HP is below 30%, automatically use the least potent activator in the backpack. The least potent activator is obviously these activators. So it's gonna use this whenever you get the 30% HP right here. Bam, it's gonna activate this and you'll automatically heal without having to trigger it. But what you can also still do is go for the four set. This is the most important part. People think the three set is good enough and a lot of people use three set and then use like other gears, but I suggest using the four set even in any build. This is the most important thing is a four set. Well, after using an activator and it says after using an activator, not for like the three set using the least important activator. This is after using the activator. So even if you get that 30% and it triggers, that's, that four piece will trigger. But if you just use an activator itself, this four set will trigger. So it's using an activator in general. After using an activator, movement speed plus 20%, all damage plus 20%, and cloak for two seconds. So when you're in the middle of a fight, you're gonna be doing a lot more damage. You're gonna be moving around a lot more if you like to be like a little movement god, you know, jump around and roll a lot. And then you get a 20% damage reduction on torso and limbs for 20 seconds. This four piece is the most important thing because 24 seven, when you're playing PVP, you're gonna be using an activator. And this is 20 seconds and there's no cooldown on this four piece. So you're always gonna have that 20% increase. So when you guys are looking at your damage reduction, I want you guys to add that 20% on top of it because you're almost always gonna have that 20%. So think about my weapon damage reduction at 27.6%, add another 20% on top of that. That's almost 50% weapon damage reduction. That is critical to PVP because a lot of people struggle with being tanky. You get two tapped by a bullseye build with a sniper. You get fucking six tapped by an unstable bomber build because they stagger you and it explodes on you. This damage reduction is critical. You have to be tanky in PVP to be able to survive and fight other players. You can't sit there and camp behind like a little rock and shoot and focus all your stats on damage and do a million damage to somebody. And then as soon as somebody pulls up on you, they do a million damage to you. No. You wanna do a million damage to somebody and then be able to take a million damage from the enemy. Balance out your stats, balance out your gears, and make sure you have that damage reduction. So right here, I'm using shelter or gloves for the status damage reduction, 15%, because status damage reduction is not that important. Weapon damage reduction is the most important thing, and you gotta get as much as possible that you can get. So status damage reduction, I want a little bit of it because it does do something. So instead of focusing status damage reduction on my mods, I'm going for weapon damage reduction. And then I compensate what I'm missing for status damage by using the shelter gloves. You gotta balance out your stats, balance out your gears, balance out your mods. So you have a little bit of everything. And then worth all around, you know, people have different builds. People have status builds. People have weapon damage builds. People have weak spot builds. You gotta have a balance of everything. For my boots, I'm running old Huntsman boots. This will increase the damage and this is what completes the build um, when it comes to shooting people with the bullseye. This is a must have for bullseye, even if you run sniper or if you run what I'm running, the wildfire. Either one, even if you run a shotgun, you need to have this, this is critical. This is gonna guarantee that you hit uh, headshots um, once you mark a target. Weak spot damage plus 30% to enemy affected by bullseye. So this increases your weak spot damage as well on top of that. So as you can see, since I uh, re equipped my mods and stuff, my weak spot damage is up now 140%. So that's my true weak spot damage. My bonus is 54.8%. So the substats you wanna focus is weak spot damage, obviously. Um, I would say about 170% weak spot damage is decent. 
um, upwards to 200% the maximum. Um, if you go over 200%, that's kind of like overkill. That's like an overflow. Um, once you get to like a certain point when you focus stuff. So if I focus too much damage, um, it's not you're not really going to perform well against other people because you're focusing on one thing. So if you have something like, for example, if you have a status build, um, if you, you got to focus like P and Psi intensity and then you got to focus status damage and then element damage, like you got to balance it out because if you focus too much on one thing, that one thing, say somebody focuses full status damage reduction, you're not doing any damage. You got to have your stuff balanced out. You got to have your stats balanced out. Focus different things. So um, now we're going to be looking at our pistol. We have a Hunter's Perk, Marked Enemies Damage versus Metas minus 20%. This is a PvP build. So this works against enemies, PvP, players, metas, metas are players. This is a 90-20% reduction when you mark an enemy. So if you're fighting head on against somebody that's right in front of you and they're marked, bam, add another 20% to this because that player is going to be marked. The wildfire, what it does is the stat, and I'm not going to explain this whole thing because a lot of people already do this in the other builds. Um, they explain like all the stats and everything like on the guns and how they work and blah 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 You should know by now how the guns work. Um, we're about a couple months into the game already It's already out if you don't know how bullseye works All you have to do is go to keyword right here BAM click X and explains everything to you everything in the game is right here when it comes to builds All the different statuses all the different damage builds everything explained right there but you can read right here too what the certain gun does. Certain guns have different things and they work in different types of ways. So this has a chance to trigger bullseye and it's a very high chance. So when you're fighting somebody head on, you're gonna trigger the bullseye. Like it's gonna happen. You have a 60% chance to trigger it. It's gonna happen. And then there's another chance to spread the bullseye. So when I'm shooting an enemy and then I trigger the bullseye on them, there's an 80% chance to spread that bullseye. So if there's somebody nearby, you could trigger the bullseye on them too. So when an enemy is marked because of this mod, marked enemies versus players minus 20%. So they're gonna do 20% less damage to you. So add that 20% onto it because you're almost always gonna have that happen. Obviously, the same stuff, weapon damage reduction, max HP, weak spot. Good ass roll, really good. For my sniper right here, everybody knows the bingo sniper, the two tapper. I'm running the bullseye as vulnerability. This is good for PVE. Um, for PvP, you might want to run the same thing with the minus the metas, but for this build, I don't run the sniper. I'm mainly using the pistol to kill people because that's where my damage is at. It's on the pistol, and the pistol is the hard-hitting thing that I use, and my mods are tuned to the pistol. So, the sniper, regardless of the bullseye build, the sniper will hit hard, especially with the Huntsman boots. It's guaranteed headshots. So, when you're guaranteed headshots, you're guaranteed big damage. So... I do again weak spot weapon damage reduction weapon damage i want full damage on this and so when i pull out the sniper i'm still two one to two tapping people but if somebody knows what they're doing and they're taking the advice that i'm telling you right now and they're really like balancing out their build and they're going for the damage reductions it might be three or four shots to take somebody out with the sniper and that's because you're not focusing full weak spot damage and you're not doing an overflow. If you do an overflow, you're always going to one or two shot people with the sniper. But they nerfed the boots so you can't just one or two shot every single person. You have to mark them now and then the person that you marked, you can headshot them and then do the big damage. And then you have to mark the next person. And then when you mark the next person, then you can fucking one shot them right after you mark them. It used to be when you mark somebody, after you mark somebody, you could just one tap anybody in the area with the sniper. But that's not how it works anymore. You have to mark them so it'll take one white shot or unless you hit the head then maybe you got god aim and you hit the head. It's really hard to hit the head in this game. But if you hit the head, bam, like you'll hit a good damage. But ideally you'll hit a body shot, you hit a weak and then you hit a weak spot after that with the boots and then you have to switch over and look at somebody else, hit another white shot and then hit a head shot. That's why we're running the pistol because the pistol, you can shoot somebody, you have a chance to mark them, a really high chance so you're probably going to mark them. You'll become super tanky because of it. And then while you're fighting that person and killing them, somebody else nearby, if there's multiple people near you, they're going to be marked because this pistol has a chance to mark enemies around you. That's why I'm running this pistol because it's basically the sniper before the nerf. It's just not going to one or two shot people. It's probably going to three. I Like you saw in the montage, I'm three shotting some people, four shotting, maybe six shotting if they're really tanky or I'm not hitting the weak spot. So like I don't trigger the bullseye like that. So it just depends on your luck really but once you build up your damage properly and you balance out everything it's gonna add up so let's go over to the memetics cradle show you guys my cradle 
Um, I'm rocking this, the handgun enhancement for plus 20% damage. And then we have for the sniper, the 20% damage right here. And then we have this agility after rolling weapon damage reduction plus 15% and status damage reduction plus 15%. So this is for my playstyle. If you have like a different playstyle where you sit back and camp a lot, you can use a different cradle perk. There are no There is another cradle perk that I'm not going to be using that enhances the damage on the bullseye. But me personally, when I play, I like to move around a lot. And then I like to make what's called ice tea for rolling. I play in people's faces a lot so because I'm using the pistol, guys. So I'm going to be playing in people's faces. I'm going to be rolling around a lot. So I'm almost always going to have that damage reduction. So on top of everything else, add another 15%. Because in PvP, you're going to be rolling a lot. You're going to be in people's faces a lot. And yeah, this is why you're using the pistol because you're close range. You're going to have like five, six bullets in the sniper. You're not going to be using this at close range. Not too often. I only used it in the video, as you guys saw. I only used it if I wanted to like hit somebody mid range for big damage and like, like they're wide in the open. I got an easy shot or I ran out of pistol ammo. So I just quick, I switched to the sniper really quickly to get the finishing blow. So almost always going to have this. This is only four seconds though. So you're not, you know, it's not going to be as often as the other uh, damage reductions that I get like 20 seconds or wah, 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 wah. But four seconds is still a decent amount and 15% is a lot. Next, we have Rapid Aid, reduces the cooldown of healing items by 30% and increases the healing effect by 15%. So, this works amazingly with the Savior build because as you see, this is a healing build and it gives you damage reduction. So, on top of that, you have a reduction on your healing time and you have a healing boost of 15%. So, let's look back at it. You get a 30% reduction on the healing time cooldown and then increases the healing effect by 15%. So you're healing for 65% now of your health when you use activators. And then on top of that, you have another 20% from the one piece on here on the savior. So add that 30% and the 20% from the savior. Mimetics is a 30%, savior is a 20%. The quick activator, 12 second cooldown after you use it. Let's see how long that takes when we use it. Bam, look at this cooldown. Look how fast that is. This cooldown is reduced half because of the cradle buff and then our savior gear. So it takes us six seconds to use another activator. Again, remember, whenever we use an activator, we get that reduction for 20 seconds on the four piece two as well. So everything comes full circle. We have a 50% reduction on our healing. We get a 20% damage reduction increase we're becoming super tanky. Like, I don't even need to explain more. You, like, you guys already see what I'm saying. It's just coming full circle. Right here. Sprint. Movement speed plus 5%. Running speed, stamina cost minus 50%. So, you can choose to take off either this or this because these are both movement things. This is for my playstyle with the pistol because I'm up close or mid-range. And I move around a lot, so I have to dodge the bullets and everything. So, these two are what I use. You could take one of these off and then you could compensate by using the bounty hunter. So, after defeating a unit you marked... Weapon damage plus 25%, weak spot damage plus 35%, lasting for 15 seconds. That's a pretty decent buff, but you have to kill somebody to do it. So, me, I don't really like this buff, and my damage is already really good, and I don't like the condition of killing somebody, and it has to be somebody that you marked on top of that. So, I don't like those conditions. I don't like condition stuff anyways. Anything that requires a condition for you to get that buff, I really don't like it that much. As long as it's easy, then I might use it. And you see, I have a couple of condition stuff that I have equipped, but they're really easy and they all come full circle. This, if you're lacking in damage, if you're lacking with like, you know, weak spot rolls on your mods and something, you can use this. And if you don't like like being a movement and like rolling around and jumping around a lot, and you have a lot of damage reduction on your mods already, then you can go with this. Tactical combo, weapon damage plus 25% for four seconds after switching or weapons are reloading. On every single build, you're going to want this. This is a must-have. Brawl boost. Damage from metas minus 20%. You guys remember from earlier, I said metas are enemy players. Those are the same thing. So, add another 20% damage reduction onto what we have total. Add another 20. We're looking at, for my build, we're looking around with what I have on my mods. You guys see I already have... 26% right here add everything else and you're gonna get about maybe 90 ish percent 80 to 90 percent damage reduction with all of these stuff added up and you got to remember almost 
almost none of these are conditions like all of these are like something that i'm always gonna have because i'm always doing these things like i'm always rolling um i'm almost always using an activator and then 20 seconds is is how long it lasts and everything like like these are all gonna be triggered when i'm in pvp and then it's gonna be halved when you start like you know fighting somebody so effect halved after dealing damage so when you shoot somebody you only get 10 percent instead of 20 but that's still a lot 10 percent is a lot so i'm gonna have anywhere from 80 to 90 percent without food buffs damage reduction amazing and then down here for the last one we have while in fortress warfare our fast gunner and weak spot damage plus 40 percent weak spot damage to bullseye plus 20 percent a lot of people don't understand this but they think that fortress warfare or fast gunner has to be triggered for you to do that plus 20 percent at the end for the bullseye that is a mistranslation and that's not how this works that is a separate thing that last part weak spot damage to bullseye plus 20 percent is a separate thing from the top part so just in general you have plus 20 percent weak spot damage from the bullseye from this cradle buff so all of these stuff don't add up into like these stats right here so i might look like i don't have like a lot of damage or damage reduction but when you do trigger them and you're in pvp this will be up like to the maximum and like you guys saw how much damage reduction how much damage increase i will have and so as you guys see like it, it's like it's not showing my my stats so when i crouch again now you see it works watch this bam now we're at 140 percent again so that's pretty much it for the build that's on um, my memex cradle that's my gears that's my mods um i didn't show my calibrations actually here's my calibrations i have a fire rate double weak spot you can go um i i, I guess you can go like crit damage like some people call crit damage or crit rate because there is a crit rate built for this um but on my sniper um this is the wrong thing i have double crit rate on here you're gonna want rapid shot again for the sniper so you can shoot faster but um you're gonna want double weak spot on here for the sniper so you can hit hard but again i said earlier i'm making another build so i went with a uh, double crit rate because my other build is going to be working with crit rate so this is pretty much it for the build those are my calibrations um i can show my attachments actually um this is more of a preference thing um so like these don't really matter but um this is my attachments i have the light break this is the optic you're always gonna want to use this optic for every single weapon and then i have the combat flashlight you can go with this one integrated laser this one is probably better this is just what i use it's all purple personal preference um but when it comes to optics always use this one when it comes to magazine always go with the most magazine for your guns and then ammo i have no ammo because i don't really use this build anymore um i completed my build so i'm done with it i'm bored so i'm switching my build um for the sniper i don't even have all the attachments for the sniper i'm lazy i never <laughs> I used this build for like a month to two months now and I never finished like the accessories like I got lazy I just threw the gold like uh, muzzle for the suppressor you can go with the compact break this is really good but if you want to go for range so you can have maximum range go with the suppressor if you just care about accuracy and stability um, go with the break but for for this build you, it doesn't really matter you're not gonna be using a sniper that often you're just gonna start hip firing um, at close range with it or if you play long range I mean long range the the stability and accuracy really doesn't matter like the sniper is one shot you're just gonna aim in bam boom you're done so i go for range optic um this is the best optics um it's clean looks good i show you guys clean looks good um by the way since i have my sniper out right now this is what it looks like for me with my weak spot damage with my sniper out you see it's not a lot i don't have an overflow i don't have over 200 percent. i have 150 i recommend 170 um so i'm a little bit under but that's fine i do good damage anyways magazine get the golden one gives you more uh five more bullets that's nice um me i've been i haven't i haven't gotten any of the magazines so i've always been using five ammo i'm just lazy guys but um what you can do if you do lack uh weak spot damage so you see i'm under i recommend 170 percent to 200 percent the maximum um what you can go with is a blue mod right here weak spot damage boost you want another weak spot as a substat you can equip it bam let's click out of this bam i'm at 170 percent i'm above it so if you don't uh if you are really tanky and you get a lot of good substats you know like damage reduction and then um based on like this is based on your like it's it's all luck based so it's based off like what you want to change up on this build um tune it to yourself like don't get exactly what i have on everything 
tune the build to yourself. You might not want Shadow gloves. You might want to go to blueprints, and then you might want to go to gloves, and you might want to get like something like fucking max HP for heavy duty. It just depends on what you want to do and what your playstyle is and what your substats are. Because if you get a lot of HP substats, then you don't want to go for HP armor. You want to get the status damage reductions because you're not going to get status reduction status damage reduction substats but if you have a lot of status that were damage reduction substats then maybe you want to go with the hp armor like it's just you got to alternate and balance it out so me i'm lacking on weak spot so for the complete the build i would use this but if i have too much damage then i might want to go more tanky and get that six percent damage reduction right here and then at ten percent you see that's just how it is and then if you don't have any hp at all and you feel like you're lacking in HP and you don't have any HP rolls and you have full damage reduction. Like you got the God rolls, you got all oh, weak spot and, and gold weak spot, gold damage reduction rolls on your, your arms and stuff, then then go HP right here because you don't have any HP and then bam, you got you got you got more HP. Now I'm at 14k. Easy. But yeah, so it's all preference. Um not preference, but it's all luck. And then whatever whatever luck you get on your mods and your rolls, then you switch over your gears and stuff and just tune your gears. Because substats, I'm going to tell you the most important thing right now. The most important thing is your substats when it comes to builds. And then you have where your actual, what completes your build is your actual like um, mods themselves, like the primary thing. And then on top of that, your gears will determine how effective like the full build is to complete with like your style of play. Um, so that's pretty much it um that's everything for this build um so rp my bullseye build it says not owned i accidentally dismantled my gun that i had it, it's actually uh it was like three star i think um but yeah if you go to for those that don't know if you go to armors now that i'm saying it um you right click on your gear plus the plus if you have stuff like the blueprints that you that you have extra of you can consume them and you can start up your gear. Starting up your gears is important. It gives you more HP on your armors and more PSI intensity. If you have a status build like Power Surge, Unstable Bomber, blah, 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 PSI intensity works with those builds. They work with statuses. Um, so I recommend go for the tops first because they get more HP. Um, you want to get the most HP out of it. So HP and then go for PSI intensity after that, which is the mass that gives the most PSI and blah, blah, blah. And then for your, your guns, when you upgrade your guns, you see it's the same thing, blah, blah, blah. When you upgrade your guns, you get more damage. And I think that's it, right? So if you click X, like go down here, you click X. Oh, wait, not this. Um, you go to tier preview down here, click T. And then it shows you everything. So you get more, yeah, you just get more damage. You get more damage when you start up your weapons. So my deagle's at um, my wildfire blueprint. Um, it's at three star. My sniper, three star. My saber mask, two star. Save your hood, uh, two star. And as you can see here, I did have this gear, like like this is what I was using before. So like I've been changing my stuff based off my stats. So I had a four star agent mask that I used to use. I have a four star uh, saver top now, uh, two star pants, two star shop door gloves. I used to use a uh, four star agent gloves. And then I have a four star season hunter boosts. So that's pretty much it for the build. That's everything complete. Um, I just explained how it works. Um, that's my advice um, on tuning everything and making sure you have it perfected um, because you can you can fully copy my build and then use it and it'll be dog shit. You gotta fine tune everything and fine tune your stats and everything because with any build in this game, you can make it work. So yeah, I hope you guys learned something new. Hope y'all enjoyed the build. I hope y'all enjoyed the montage. And for those that try this out, good luck with it. And just make sure to like take the advice that I said about um, your substats and balancing everything out. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. I will be releasing a new build soon. And I, I mean soon as in who knows a couple weeks to a month. Like it took me like what two months now a month to make a new build. I only made one build video. Um, I don't like to make build videos just like you know get the random mods and gears and then fucking do a build video. I like to take my time. I like to learn it. I like to do it blindly and build it up myself and fine tune it perfectly the way I want it and then get all the clips and you know make a good montage out of it to display it to you guys and show you how it works um, my build style is different from other people so yeah just try your best enjoy it have fun um thank you guys for watching i'm gonna be making the next build video hopefully 
within the next couple weeks, maybe even a couple days. Maybe I might finish it really fast. We don't know, but I will try to upload more often. I'll try to find other content to make besides build videos. Um, and we'll see. I'm also starting to stream on Twitch again more often. I started yesterday, so hopefully we're back to the daily streams. And join the Discord in the description. Um, we have people up in there that can help you if you need. If you have any questions or anything, I'm in the Discord every day, you know, in the VCs. Or you can just chat inside the, the general chat and people will answer to you, help you out, whatever. So, yeah. Have a good day, guys. And like and subscribe. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a good day.